Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I got Chump Change with me, and we're going to be looking in what to do with your helium miner once you've gotten sick and tired of it. He's got an MT MNTD model that he doesn't use anymore, and I got a Synchrobit model, which Synchrobit has actually gone out of business. They're bankrupt. Now, there are two companies, uh, COTX and Nebra. They're also trying to make aftermarket firmware. I've tried it. It doesn't work, at least at the time of recording here uh, at the end of December 2022. It doesn't work. So what me and Chump are going to end up doing, we're going to pull these apart and try to get to the Raspberry Pi inside because you can use the Raspberry Pi for many different things other than just a helium miner. Now, the one that Chump has, has a should have a standard Raspberry Pi 4 model in it. And actually, I think his... The, the black model has four gigs of RAM. Do you remember? Right, yeah. So okay. the black has four, then gold had eight. Okay. He's going to do better off. Mine has a compute module four, and I'm going to open up mine here in one second, once I get the right bit on my screwdriver here. And unfortunately, it only has two gigs of RAM, but we can still use it for a lot. And this is right. the external enclosure, because Sycrobit was nice. They had an external and then a smaller internal. But, you know, I've had this outside since February 2022. Ran great, but the company went bankrupt, so I couldn't use it anymore. Crazy. So how much uh, helium did you end up pulling off that? Do you know? 38 or so. Plus, I gave, like, one wow. or two helium to uh, D miner so he can get his uh, helium miner up and running. Right, because so. you need to, like, pay for it to switch locations, right? Is that? Yeah, because he got that off at 56. Yeah. So, yeah, he had to reassert his location real quick. Send him like one or two helium. I'll hold on to the helium until the next bull run. Hopefully something comes of it again. And see. Okay. Oh, so perfect. This, okay. I couldn't take apart, so the other side won't come out. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Okay. Like locked in, so I gotta, I gotta unscrew. I think the actual Raspberry Pi to get it apart. Okay. Well, let me get mine apart here because that's very similar to what's in mine here. Now, if we look at mine, the compute module four is right underneath here. I gotta remove this heatsink. But that top board that he has sitting right there with the little black antenna coming off it, that's your transmitter and combiner board or something like that. And let me get my heat sink and get this popped out of the case. So he's got to get through his first to get to the Raspberry Pi. And I need to, like, fully disassemble mine. Right. That's so. crazy. Yeah, Sigrobit went and made their own custom carrier board. So, oh, wow. Yeah, let me get the uh, heat sink here off. And I've actually taken this thing apart probably 10 times the last two weeks trying custom firmwares because this one, unlike his Raspberry Pi 4, or standard Raspberry Pi 4, boots off of a uh, micro SD card. This one has built on eMMC Flash. It's got 32 gigabytes. It's basically like having a micro SD built right onto it. So every time I wanted to reflash it, I had to literally pull off the compute module off this board and plop it into this little wave share adapter which basically turns it into a raspberry pi 4 but it doesn't exactly have the same port setup as a raspberry pi 4 but it still works all right so there it is so all they had it was like stuffed onto the pins itself oh okay so they actually made a connector board for it that goes onto the yeah. 40 pin gpio that's perfect okay Interesting. Was there no heat sink on the actual silver part on the Raspberry Pi 4, the CPU? Nothing. Oh, my like, God. Really nothing. So this is the, that's the back half. And wow. The so they put a heat sink on the RAM, but not the CPU itself. <laughs> Interesting. That's nuts. And that top piece you have, that's the combiner board. So if you look at mine, my combiner board is right here with the transmitter. And here is my CM4. If I take off what's left of this oh, pad, you'll see it's the exact same CPU that's on a Raspberry Pi 4. Right. So let me pop that's this crazy. off here. I don't even know if you can. Ugh. Yep, exact same. Yeah. See, now you have a regular standard Raspberry Pi 4, which makes it even more usable than what I have. There we go. Interesting. So this is a compute module 4. And the way you can tell, because this comes in a eMMC version, which is what I have, this top black chip is actually like a built-on micro SD card, or it comes without that, and then you would use a standard micro SD on the breakout for these. This one's going to be disabled. 
So for me, now I can take this and clip it into this little adapter once I get the right direction. Because it's got these crazy little tiny connectors on the back. That's right. how it works. I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing out of here, man. I don't know how they sandwiched that in there. <laughs> oh my god, it's like there's gotta be a screw I'm like not seeing or something. Because like it should pop off. Either that or you might have to angle it a little bit or something That's so the IO do, ports like... would clear. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So this turns the compute module four into a Raspberry Pi four. Um, they also have an extra switch on here that you need to use when it comes time to actually reprogram and put a new image on the eMMC. So if I want to throw Raspbian on here and just turn it into a little computer, I can do that quite easily, but I have to manually flash it through my computer using a USB-C cable and extra drivers to make it USB boot, and then you can write it like a flash drive. It's kind of convoluted. Yours is so much easier because it's just a micro SD card. Well, I threw it across the room. <laughs> Now, there's so many right, things, especially with his model with more memory. Um, if you get one of the gold models that has 8 gigs of RAM, you can even run a flux node on one of those. Uh, I believe right. Hawk even made a video for that. Doing yeah, that. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, he, he got, got it apart. That was holding it in. Oh, I completely it's forgot SD about that. Card that's holding it. It's oh, and they got, um, so they got some, like, it's kind of hard to see, but Holy the thermal pad, like 3M. Jesus, that thing's thick. Yeah, it's that's like, not going to uh, transfer any heat. Okay, so that's how they were trying to cool the CPU. They were using that as an external heat sink, but you're not going to trans. Well, you only have to transfer a few watts. Us. Yeah, it's not very good because mm -hmm. you're on the wrong side of the PCB board, so you're not going to get as much heat transfer to begin with. Plus, that pad's really thick, so you're going to transfer even less heat. But at the same time, yeah. the Raspberry Pi CPU uses three or five watts. It's not that hard to dissipate that little bit of power. Right. So. If you if you have a helium miner that has an eight gig model, you can do a flux node with it. You can run Raspy and turn it into a regular computer. You can possibly run a lightning node. Uh, I'm going to be looking into that soon. I think Chump might be looking into that himself as well. He might be playing with it soon. Um, make a few extra little satoshis yeah. here and there. <laughs> yeah, but there are so I'm many. I'm going to ask you about it because I don't know anything about that yet. I'm still learning myself. I'm look into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can even use Raspberry Pi and do like retro arch, uh, old, uh, old gaming system style. There's so many things you could do with this. And normally like the one he has 35, 50 bucks is the normal price. But since it's right. so hard to get a hold of them, you still find them on Amazon for 200 bucks. There's no reason for you to take a crazy, a useless helium miner and throw it out when you got a $200 piece of equipment in there that you can repurpose and do so much with. Now, a question for you. Can you upgrade the RAM on these or no? No. Or like soldered on? Okay. No, yeah. Underneath that little silver heatsink is your RAM module. Uh, oh, basically, yeah. the exact same thing as this. Mine doesn't have a heatsink on it. Now, I have a heatsink coming in for this uh, Amazon the next day or two, so I can properly use it. And I found a 3D print off the Thingiverse that fits this specific breakout board for this. But for a regular oh, wow. Raspberry Pi 4... There's tons that you can find on Thingiverse and just print them out for free that will fit your normal form factor. Oh, nice. Oh, God, yes. So there's no reason to just have a, a naked little board out here you're worried about shorting out. You can just 3D print them all day long. Or you can pick up cases right. off of Amazon for like 8 or 10 bucks. Interesting. So this thing's crazy. I can't believe like this is it. It's just this tapped that onto a pie. Yep. And that top, everything that's in your other hand, the case and that combiner, that part's trash. There's nothing else you can really use that combiner or that circuit board for. The right. money is in that pie. Right, right. Just, uh, this is wall art at this point. Pretty much, yeah, it is. <laughs> that's it. Jeez, man. That's wild. Not much to these things, but damn. No, there isn't. It sure caused a damn headache for a lot of people. Considering what we paid, I, I, honestly, this... That uh, transmitter combiner board probably cost them what 20 30 bucks or so, and they were selling right. these things for six seven hundred dollars combined. That's insane. Right. Yep, so you might as well recoup at least a little bit of your money since uh, right. currently helium's less than two dollars each. It's like, well, wow, what are you gonna do now? You get this thing back together <laughs> <laughs> if he's gonna use it again. Pie. I don't need the pie yet. 
He doesn't need the pie yet, but he can still use that as a helium miner. Mine, unfortunately, mm -hmm. waiting for someone else to get an extra firmware out for these is just not worth it. So I might as well just repurpose this, try making the lightning network out of it, and get some Satoshis or do whatever else with it. Uh, a lot of things that I usually do on my server, you can also do on here. There's customized server uh, software that is written for ARM devices. So I'll leave a few links oh. down in the description below. Um, thank you so much, Chump, for pulling yours apart with me, too. Yeah, no worries, man. No worries. I'm glad to do it. I've never done it, so <laughs> new to me, too. <laughs> Everyone, take it easy. Come say hi at Misfit Mining. Link will be down in the video description below. And both of us will catch you later. Peace out.